Star coming to you live from the Bronx. The subjects that I'll be discussing right now is about how to get in a band. <clears throat> this is a very underrated skill in this day and time. I believe that a lot of people can fall into the pitfall of not playing enough with other people. I'll say that again. A tremendous pitfall in music, whatever you're doing with it, is to not play with other people. <clears throat> it falls into a perfectionistic lifestyle. I might have to check my, you know, my usage of that word, but <clears throat> still, you, you know what I'm saying. You don't want to be the guy. I personally have done this. You don't want to be that guy just plays in his bedroom and does not get out there and show his talents. That is a waste of effort. If you're not out there giving your love of music to other people, you are wasting your talent. <clears throat> so here are the top five suggestions I'd give anybody who's looking to expand, show the world their gift, and get out there and get into a band or start playing with other people. Now, <clears throat> there are several free resources out there. This is my first step. Several free resources out there to help you find a band. Um, some of them may be more active in your area than another, but the two main ones that I know that work are band, band search or something. It, you know, if you search on Google, you know, band, you're trying to find a musician or you're trying to find a band, there's basically classifieds that are specifically devoted to that. <clears throat> the second one is Craigslist. Now, what you're going to do when you get on this is you're just going to read and look for something that you think you'd be interested in. And from there, you send out an email. You're going to need to, you know, be professional. You're going to need to be, um, you're going to need to be expressive of what you can provide for them, your interest in them, and you know, you're going to want to ask them if you're going to want to be as specific as possible to the to what nature the band is in. I, to, to what um. <laughs> brain fart, uh, to what the band is looking for. Because sometimes, and I've been on quite a few of these, they'll post saying that they need a guitarist. They'll call you in, and it'll be... Look, I mean, you just need to clarify. You need to find out whether they're auditioning other guitar players, or they're... Um, you know, they haven't written any songs, they are just trying to get it together, if they're well established, or if they're looking for a touring guitarist, they're looking for somebody to do just a couple gigs in their city, in the city that they're, that they're coming to. So whatever it is, you just need to be very, very specific with them in your email to make sure that they even know for themselves and for your own sake to know what's going on. <clears throat> the second... The second thing you need to do, aside from that, is you need to look uh, online or go to a music store and find out where the local jams are. You need to be able to start, um, oh and another, another way to find it is ask your teacher if there are any local jams or musicians meet up. You know, you can use Facebook to find a musician's meetup. But a jam, like a blues jam, or a jazz jam, if you're a jazz player, a general musicians meet up and jam, it's a really, really great way to get out there and meet other players. And you don't have to be great. I mean, you know, 90, depending on what blues jam you go to in the city, for example, I live in Manhattan, New York, you know, the greatest city in the world, arguably. There are, you know, about 10 blues jams a night uh, in Harlem <laughs> you know I mean there 
And then, you know, in other areas like Hoboken and the village, there's probably another 15 or 20. Uh, most of them have players that I rate at, you know, at D level. Uh, you know, F, D, C, B, A. Uh, but there are also jams where there's, you know, there's better players <clears throat> or whatever. The point is, just get out there and just go to those jams and you'll get to see what it's like to be, you know, to be like a working musician because they'll go up there and they'll be like, all right, let's play a shuffle blues and C. Ready? And then they go right into it. <laughs> and, and you get great experience and it's really, really worth it. Uh, the third thing would be to, you know, talk to your friends. You know, so ask your friends if you could play with them and, <clears throat> and just, you know, pitch the idea to your friends or say, you know, I'm interested in uh, creating some type of music with you guys and I would like to know if you need a guitar player, you know, and if they say no, just say, well, what if I just came and, you know, just heard what you guys did and, you know, recorded with you or something. But really, what you can do is you can go there with the intention of playing. You could bring your guitar, you could record them, you can learn the part, and then you could be like, yo, you know, uh, I learned the part, so maybe I could just step in and jam. Um, the fourth thing, let me see, the fourth thing would be to collaborate. So you could go... You could go on uh, Craigslist and you could post an ad saying that you're a guitarist in this style and you will offer your free assistance. You will help record a guitar part for, uh, you know, whatever. You know, you will record a guitar part for your project for free. And you undoubtedly will get some people that will like to work with you. Uh, and again, you know, use your discretion write very specific emails about what it is that you would like to do and you would not like to have happen when you go to the place. For instance, you know, you don't want to go to a place and they haven't written anything. And they told you that it's all, it's okay, just come and, you know, just uh, bring your guitar and we'll figure it out. You don't want to go there and deal with that. You want to, you know, you want to have it be a good situation. So in any of these, use your discretion. The fifth thing, oh boy, um, I lost my train of thought. The fifth thing would be you could go to a guitar center or a community bulletin board and post that you're looking to form a band or you're looking to jam with somebody, you're looking to have a partner to play with. Um, or you could even, while you're at the music store, you could play and sometimes I've had people approach me, you know, I've had, you know, a few random people approach me to ask me if I give lessons or to just compliment me or to just, um, you know, invite me to play with them or something. It, you know, that's a good way to do it. And you can approach them. <clears throat> so these are just, these are just five little ideas about how you can get yourself out there. But I really cannot stress the importance of getting yourself out there playing with other people because if you're not doing that you are wasting I mean to quote Pat Metheny I, I took a, uh, a seminar with Pat Metheny and he talked about I did this twice actually and he talked about how it is that he got good now he says you know he says one that he never practiced with. was he worked with bands where the people were better than him. And if he became the best one in the band, he would quit. I can see how that would be tremendously powerful. Um, every time I work with new musicians, I work not as good as me. And, and that's, that's BS because everybody has different facets that are stronger than others. And you have a weakness that somebody else is strong in. I don't care if they, you know, don't the harmonic minor scale in thirds. You know, 
you know, in every key. So, you know, there's something to be learned from everybody. <clears throat> and, the, and the other point I make before I get swept away by these winds <laughs> is you have to be persistent. You have to sell yourself. You have to be completely persistent. You have to um, not give up with what you do. And if somebody rejects you, uh, here's what you do. You just, you don't think in your mind, oh, that SOB, he didn't, you know, how dare he, he doesn't know who I am, I am the man, and he's an idiot, and he's screwed up in the head. You don't go there. Do not, do not do that. Erase, erase, erase that thought. What you do is, <clears throat> you think, oh, he doesn't understand. And then you just say, well, you know, uh, okay, so what, you, what you're talking about then is that you need somebody who's more more of like a uh, fill in the blank you know you give you, you put another thought in his head and you uh, hold up and you put another thought in his head about what he needs you know don't leave it up to him to figure out what it is uh, that he needs you to do you need to put that idea in his head that's part of being a salesman and marketing yourself um, these are all valuable skills but if I had to say, if I had to sum up everything I just said in one, in one quick paragraph, it would be persist, persist, persist. Two, do not do it alone. Don't be the type of guy who is obsessed with getting the perfect tone and the perfect licks before he actually gets out there and plays because that is a tremendous pitfall. <clears throat> You will learn 10 times faster if you just get out there and play. Will you fall on your butt a few times? Yes. Yes, you will fall again and again, but you will learn. And that is what makes a great musician. <clears throat> and that is what makes a successful musician. Somebody who gets out there is persistent as all hell and continues on the path of being a tremendous musician <clears throat> so with that I'm going to end this video I hope you guys enjoyed it um, I'm gonna go work out now I'll talk to you soon